put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Alright, citizen, prepare to be judged. Judge Dread, or rather Dread, 3D. Move you. Set in a time where even possessing a seemingly harmless drug that might make you a little slower than usual can get you several years in prison. So I guess possibly the US today and where the law enforcement is the only hope of justice. Okay, not the US today. Anyway, in this world, the population has far too little room to live on on account of the charred earth. Yeah, great idea with the nuclear warfare guys. And the police force proved inadequate to deal with it. So street cops are now street judges. Judge, jury, and executioner allowed to execute perpetrators on scene. Although this is obviously not something that is done when the crime does not warrant execution. The most feared is Judge Dredd. And he is in this saddled up with a rookie partner because they reached into a big hat of cliched concepts for action flicks and that's what they happen to draw out. And the two of them have to fight their way up to the top of a so-called city block, I think, which is basically like a skyscraper, but it's also a, basically every level of this skyscraper is a, you know, a, a building block. Kind of, yeah, people live there is what I'm trying to get at. And yeah, I suppose that pretty much does it for the thin plot. This is desperate to remove any memory of the 95 Sly film and in a lot of ways it does a, a good job of that, although it's arguably at least as cheesy. And both are very much products of their time. This is very Nolan-esque. It is, on the whole, basically... <sighs> slightly better movie, at least, I'd say, but it definitely is a very... It's more about aesthetics than plot and, and deeper meaning. There are some themes explored, but a lot of the time the movie seems to forget that it's meant to question, or at least the... Uh, as far as I understand, the original comic, very much satire, 
question, is this police state really a good thing, when a lot of the time it actually seems to just laud Dredd and the fellow judges as just the, you know, the heroes that we need. Not necessarily even the heroes we deserve, but yeah. It's a really brutal film. This movie tells you within the first couple of minutes if you're going, if, if you are in the right, if, if you are in the intended audience for it. After a brief narration by Dredd himself, providing pretty much the only real exposition about the world, not just various situations, there's very little exposition. Mostly it's just communicated visually or by, by, by virtue of a situation. Something happens and you understand what, what's going on from that. You, you summarize. You, you deduce it. Yes, after this very brief narration, the kickin' soundtrack very just yeah booms its way through the theater and very soon after the violence begins as well and at that point you're basically you know exactly if this is a movie for you or not it's 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 yeah it's quite gory the the violence is at times even dwelled upon and almost kind of it's 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 gazed upon it's uh, glorified the The, the slow motion, I, I definitely want to comment on, basically, the reason they have to get to the top floor is because they are making their way to Mama, who basically owns that entire building block. The, yeah, all the floors are run by her gang. And there is a drug involved, which is called slow-mo and it slows your perception by a hundred or some yeah, yeah hundred times something like that and we see the world as it's experienced by people on slow-mo several times and it's it, it has this great effect of Basically, it's the only time the movie lets up. It's the only time the movie isn't just grimy and gritty and nasty and really unpleasant. You do not want to live in this world that the movie presents you with. And so you can understand, excuse me, why these people take so long, especially when you see how it affects them. They, they, it suddenly looks beautiful. And without actually having anyone say it, the movie has thus told you these people are doing this drug because it's the only way they can stand to even be alive. And in these sequences of slow motion, of which I want to note, there are not that many. I feared that there would be from the trailers, but it's there are not that many and they're spread out very nicely. You're not going to get sick of the slow mo in this movie. I'm, I can pretty much guarantee you that. Except maybe if it's like the only action movie you've watched in 10 years, so you're not used to excessive use of slow motion in recent action movies. It's obviously more slow motion than maybe, uh, yeah, 10 years ago, 15 years ago in action movies. Anyway, and there are several of these scenes where it's... The, the fact that the judges, uh, like I joked about in the plot description, 
you do in, in this movie in this world it presents you with you are sentenced to several years in prison just for possession of the drug slow-mo and there's there's a raid where basically you see it happens very early on don't worry I'm not spoiling anything where you at first you yeah, you're seeing it through the eyes of people on slow-mo, and like I said, the world just looks beautiful. You just relax, and it's it's pleasant, and then suddenly the violence bursts through because the judges arrive and break up this. It's, it's sort of reality forcing its way back in, and we have this great contrast between the very beautiful and the very nasty because it's a very it's a violent attack as all the attacks in this movie are and it actually it's the the movie sometimes uses the slow motion in that way with thus sort of taking pleasure in showing you this detail violence this bloodletting in slow motion, where it didn't need to be in slow motion. The, the various characters are handled pretty nicely. Dread is pretty much a rock, and that's something that I really understand that a lot of people, especially fans of the original comic, really wanted him to be, and which he isn't quite in the first one. He's he's badass in both of these movies, but in this one, he's he's just a rock. You can't uh, should have left my arms into the shot. You you can't. Uh, he's not gonna budge. Is what I'm saying, and. With that said, he may, there might be a, sort of a change in his, he, he may change his mind about something over the course of the film, but it's not going to come easy. And he is the law. And yes, his helmet stays on the entire movie. And yeah, he just has this... It's, it's not so much a person as just the arm of the law. It's, it's, uh, he might as well be a robot to a certain extent. As it should be. It's, it's justice, you might say. It's the face of justice. And Carl Urban does a great job using a pretty decent Clint Eastwood impersonation. Basically, it's just the the intonation and the cadence. It's not the voice. He doesn't go for a, the he doesn't do the Christian Bale Batman voice thing. Don't worry. But yeah, there there's one bit especially where you can really hear that's that's Clint Eastwood right there. Anyway, a Clint Eastwood impersonation, and a chin, and that's basically what he has to carry the, uh, yeah, entire role. And the villain Mama, Lena Headey, is really good. She's the right kind of villain. She's the smart villain. When she finds that there are judges in the building, she has it sealed off and just takes precautions to make sure that they're... You know, she, she takes it seriously. She's not the, the stupid kind of villain that just let, lets things go wrong. Every time she finds that something she did didn't work, was insufficient, or there's new trouble, she deals with it. And she deals with it swiftly and seemingly effectively. 
And that's actually something the film does a really good job of, you know, I mean, you have this basic setup, and then they just keep building on that. They, they have a number of situations where you're like, how are the judges going to get out of this one alive? This is just... And, and it's not really... In this movie, bullets run out. There are clips, and sooner or later you're going to be out of bullets. And there's just these two people against a ton of people. So they're not just going to shoot everyone and be running through the building, gunning down everything. It's not going to work out that way. They, there, there are far more people on the other side, and it's their turf, you know. So, and and that is something that is actually addressed. And the the only other character that I really need to bring up here is Judge or Judge. Rookie Anderson, let's go with that, who is under evaluation through the movie. And she is, she, she's what brings humanity into the film at all. And without it, it would have been intolerable, I gotta say. She... And with that said, she is not this... She, she's definitely not helpless. She kicks plenty of ass. But basically, she... There's... She, she doesn't just... She doesn't see it quite as negatively and as one-sidedly as Dredd does. But at the same time, she's not going to... You know, get let herself get killed because she wasn't quick enough to fire her gun. The... Yes, and I should definitely also say about her, she is psychic, she's an empath, and I believe this is true of the comics. I was not happy when I found out that there, that's my least favorite part of the One Judge Dread comic book that I've read. The one where he fights a predator. And yes, that is why I read it. Although I'm not averse to reading more Judge Dread. Anyway, they deal with it really well. They, they handle it just about perfectly. They don't overuse it. They have some nice jokes with it. And, yeah, they just, they, they use it well. You, again, I, I'm pretty, I can say with pretty, I, I doubt you're going to be really unhappy about the psychic aspect. Because trust me, if, yeah, I would have hated it if they hadn't dealt with it just right. So, yeah. Now, this is, this, this has a really distinct look to it. Uh, like I've already said, it's, it's a very, the, the world, the physical, the physical environment is really unpleasant. That they are going through this slum building, and there's a million tragic destinies there. There's not only I'd, I'd say this movie does a much better job of showing human beings within this sad, decrepit world, and the first one. Basically, there were, yeah, the, the, basically everyone that you saw, especially in the slums, were just these, yeah, awful people. There, there were hardly anyone who wasn't, anyway. And in this, there's a ton of people who aren't, who, who aren't part of Mama's game. And, they, 
there, there are families, there, there are children there. And that is just part of the, the, the sad reality of it, that they are living in these awful conditions. The, the, the movie is really nasty and unpleasant from start to finish. Again, only interrupted by things like the slow-mo sequences. And it's the kind of thing where it's really wise that the movie is like 90 minutes pretty much straight up. They, it's, it's basically the shortest length where it's satisfactory as a feature film. And if they had made it much longer, you would have just stopped. It, it would have been too much because it's so hard-hitting, it's so intense, it's so brutal. Like I said, it's just, it's a world that you do not want to live in, and it's, it's unrelenting in that way, and it's really wise of them to, yeah, stick, stick to this running time, and then from there just say, okay, we're gonna jam pack the running time with nastiness and action and yeah. And the movie the, the movie is quite tense at times. Like I said, it's not just them going around guns blazing. They are outgunned and there are situations where you know that they they can't be spotted there. It's yeah. And then at the same time, there's plenty of action, and the action is really good. I'd also say it does a good job of balancing the pace. In general, it's, it's a nicely balanced film for being a nasty, unpleasant movie. There's a lot of action, but you never... You don't get overwhelmed by it. It's never to the point where you... It, it gives you time to breathe in between action scenes. And without these scenes feeling like a waste of time either. There's character development. There is a little bit of plot. And... You, you really get into these characters. I very much enjoyed seeing both judges, and I enjoyed uh, every, everything I saw of Mama. And Mama is that kind of really relentless, you, you really hate her, and you want to see her be brought down. She's really, really nasty, really, um, also brutal, again. It's, you, you can believe that she would, I mean, Lena Headey is not a that physically imposing offhand. There's actually there's an early scene where you see her surrounded by these guys from her gang, and she's like the shortest person in the room. But you believe that they don't touch her because she's just that fierce that you do not want to cross her. You don't want to look at her wrong. You're, she is just terrifying and that's something that they establish really well really well early on anyway yeah and dread badass and gets the job done and and you can really tell that he's a veteran that he he's been at this for a really long time and then anderson softening it just that tiny little bit, giving, allowing us to have the dread that we want to see, and at the same time having this, you know, keeping it from being excessive, and without it ever becoming too... She, she's, she's female, but she's not girly at all. She's, she's really tough herself. Now, the
this has been there are those that say that this is too much like a video game it definitely is a lot like a video game it's again that's that's what action movies today are like and if you want more plot or you want a more if if you want a deeper film it's it's very much it's visceral that's visceral not visual and that's just, that just is what it is, and it, it tells you this very early on, and it never betrays that. And yeah, if that's just if that's not what you're in for, then this is not the movie for you. If if that's not what you want, now the dialogue is pretty good and. Like I said, there's no, there's very little exposition, and again, most of it is like there's there's a briefing scene early on where they're told about Mama, and that's just yeah, they're being told about Mama. They they haven't encountered her before, and so yeah, that's that's it. But it doesn't like stop and tell you oh this is that weapon and this does that and stuff. Most of that you just deduce from seeing it in action, but yeah, the, the dialogue, it's like watching these people speak regularly. There's, yeah, there's never an exchange where it feels unnatural, and yeah, it feels very much like they just picked a day from Dredd's career and put it up on screen. It doesn't feel like it's any sort of specific, it, it feels very much like something happened before that and something's happening after it. It doesn't feel like it, it doesn't feel staged. And there are one-liners definitely and macho exchanges at times it got, there's like once or twice where it actually got a little bit too much, I'd say, but yeah. Now, I suppose that more or less covers it. Almost forgot about the 3D. They use the layers well. It's a good kind of immersive experience where you really feel like it's happening right in front of you. And it doesn't draw so much attention to it it's not to you know it's not throwing too much stuff directly at you where you feel like ah, I'm ducking under it's more that stuff is going on right in front of you or you might feel like if something does go towards you it's at least not like a bullet or something like that it's going to be blood or something along those lines where you just feel like you you're getting drenched in blood from being near all this bloodshed i've reviewed other parts of this series the links are in the description box please rate and comment and hey if you like this video that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it